Ice Valley. Man, Fendrana Drifts is such a way cooler name. Hello, this is Mr. Bacon Bits, and welcome back to Metroid Prime Remastered. We're here in the Space Pirate Base in, in Fendrana. Because there are, uh... There's something specific. Also, we just got ourselves the Super Missile, which is... the, uh, beam combo for the Power Beam. Oops. Right. Uh... There we go. I need to get used to that. Because in the classic control scheme... In the classic control scheme... Come on. There we go. Yeah, in the, in the classic control scheme... Uh, switching beams was done with the uh, right stick. Since it wasn't used for a free look. Okay. I just put my phone on silent because, uh... I always seem to get notification, phone notifications when, uh, I don't want, <laughs> when I don't want it. Okay. Keep in mind that the wave beam can keep enemies stun locked if you spam charge shots. They're actually taking cover. I, I... I saw one of them, like, ducking down. Okay, there we go. And we got ourselves a new enemy. Flying Space Pirate. Flying Pirate. They like to, uh... They're very squirrely and like to dodge your shots. But... You can... You can track them pretty easily with, uh... Yeah, you can track them pretty easily with missiles. Wave Beam seems to work pretty well, too. Okay. Alright. Let's use that. And, of course, don't be afraid to use, uh, Super Missiles can take them down in, in, like, one shot. There we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, one of those, uh... One of those artifact clues mentioned a tower in Fendrana. This is the area. But, uh, there's not really much we can do. Like, we can get into one of these, but, uh, yeah. Doesn't seem to be anything that we can do at this moment. I mean, if you know how to exploit the, uh, if you know how to exploit the game. Yeah, this seems significant. The ice covering this opening can be melted with extreme heat. And then this thing that you can scan, but can't really do that with the ice in the way. Uh, yeah, there's something there. But normally we can't really do anything about that. So let's just continue on. Uh, let's see. And come to think of it, it is kind of weird that there's some, like, air moving through here. But anyway, let's continue on. Take a look at your mini-map to make sure that you're not retreading old ground. This is the area... this is the way we're supposed to go. Research Lab Aether. Okay. This is a partially charged shot will do. Oh, we 
got something here. Hmm. Metroids. Well, it's safely behind containment, right? Recording to logbook. Talon Metroid, energy-based parasitic predator. The effects of Phazon have turned these Metroids, a species of alpha predator native to SR388, into a unique subspecies found only on Talon 4. A Talon Metroid will latch onto its prey and drain energy, growing larger as it does. The only way to shake an attached Talon Metroid is to enter Morph Ball mode and lay a bomb. Yeah, unfortunately, we have to deal with Metroids in this game. I mean, it's a Metroid game. Then again, there are some Metroid games that don't have Metroids. Well, that's a... Hello. Yeah, there we go. Interesting that that let out an alarm. Anyway, there's a couple of logs we can get. Initial transfer of Metroids to Talon 4 research facilities has been completed. Three were terminated in an incident at the landing site, but the others were pacified and transported safely. Initial Phazon infusion testing is underway. We are eager to observe the effects of Phazon on Metroids, especially their ability to absorb and process the energy given off by Phazon's sources. Early research suggests a considerable growth in power and size. Whether the creatures stay stable thereafter remains to be seen. So yes, apparently Metroids have a weird relationship with Phazon. Seems to be mostly positive. The reconstruction of Geoform 187, codenamed Ridley, was recently completed. After his defeat on Zebes, Command ordered a number of metagenetic improvements for him. Though aggressive, we were able to implement these changes in a cycle. The metamorphosis was painful, but quite successful in the end. Early tests indicate a drastic increase in strength, mobility, and offensive capability. Cybernetic modules and armor plating have been added as well. We believe our creation, now called Meta Ridley, will become the mainstay of our security force, a job he will certainly relish. Yeah. Much like Research Lab Hydra, be watchful of, well, lots of pirate logs that you can grab. First of all, okay, there we go. Let's grab this while we're here. Confidence is high regarding Phazon applications. We know enough about Phazon now to begin combining it with Space Pirate DNA. The code name for this venture will be Project Helix. Preliminary studies indicate that Phazon infusion could produce radical new pirate genomes. Benevolent mutation levels are high on current test subjects. Phazon madness is a concern, but refinements in the infusion process should reduce or neutralize the odds of mental degeneration. They're really going full force on the Phazon experimentation. Wait, where were you? There you are. Okay. Okay, that's not the last of them. Anything here? No. Okay, let's move down. There you were, you were hiding. Okay, that should be everything. Activate that elevator for now. And let's see. You know, let's get some more pirate logs. 
Metroid Dissection continues to provide more questions than answers. Our research teams have isolated the energy conduits that run from the invasive twin mandibles to the energy core in the creature's quadripartite nucleus, but the, matter, the manner in which a Metroid actually extracts the life force from its prey remains an utter mystery. The victim does not lose blood or any other vital fluids, and yet the Metroid extracts energy. Identifying this energy is our central problem. It takes no physical form, and yet without it, the victim dies. We will continue to research this matter, as the isolation of this life-giving essence could be the key to our ascendance. Yeah, good luck with that, space pirates. You'll probably be long gone before you're able to fi figure that out. Studies of Metroid biology continue, though with limited progress. It seems likely that we, w we will be much more successful using the Metroids for our means, rather than trying to reproduce their powers. If they could be adequately tamed, we would have no need of a proper understanding of their metabolism. A small force of disciplined Metroids could wipe out entire armies. And once we find a way to shield them from cold containment weapons, they will be invincible. Furthermore, if we could then harvest the energy they'd consumed, we would have a near-limitless source of power at our disposal. Their dreams are nothing but dreams. Well, maybe it could be possible, considering what, what the Galactic Federation is capable of. Uh, this can actually be simply destroyed with a missile. So let's grab that. But before we move on from this research lab, there is another item that we can get. See what looks like a very small catwalk up there? And there's a missile expansion right there. We need to carefully move the, the morph ball across this. And there we go. Nice. There's some more Metroids in containment, but... Okay. Oh! Hello! A version of the beetle with an ice carapace. Just an ice beetle. Averse to heat. So they instantly die if you, if you hit them with something superheated. But you can also just use charge shots, <laughs> like what I did. At any rate, more space pirates to take care of. Okay. There we go. That sounds like everything. Now, there's something of very interest... Alright, might as well. <laughs> All I wanted to do was look down. Anyway, there is something of interest being held right here. We need that, but it is guarded by three energy shields. Force fields, yeah. So we need to find ways to deactivate the force field. Just look for anything red that we can scan. Central tank main circuit connection terminated. Okay, that's one. Now let's look for another. In actuality, there's probably, like, one on each floor here. Okay, there's four floors, but you catch my drift. Here's one here. And... If I'm to assume... There's no computers up here, so so the last one is on the top level. 
Can I? Yeah, I can access it from here. And there we go. We can fully access this item. Come on, grab it. The Thermal Visor. This lets you see in the dark and see uh, heat signatures. And unfortunately, yeah, we're going to have to use it. Okay, the, the game immediately tells you. Now, the thermal visor in this version of the game, it is very headache-inducing. I'm going to say that right up front. For some reason, they added a heavy... They added, like, a heavy uh, blur to it. I mean, that's probably... That's probably how thermal vision usually is, but... It's, uh, yeah. I'm gonna try not to be m moving... Moving the view so... Heavy. Come on. Okay, come on. There we go. Yeah. Just to be courteous, whenever I use the thermal visor, I'm going to try not to be moving too fast. It'll help me out, too. I don't really get motion sick sickness from games, but... It's pretty possible that the, that the new thermal visor might do that. Yeah, the, the thermal visor in the original game. It did look like this, but it didn't have a heavy blur on it. It didn't have a he heavy blur filter on it. Ah, come on. Ah! Okay. Oh! Got destroyed. Okay. So I've got enough light over here. Now, the thermal visor can detect power conduits hidden behind walls. So simply use the wave beam to power these up. We are going to be needing to use that for a while. Okay, got ourselves a new uh, scan sentry drone. Being machines, they are susceptible to electrical attacks. So, wave beam again is your friend. Okay. Yeah, if you don't use electrical attacks, when you deplete their when you deplete their health, they will try to do a like what a one last disruption attack which can make it very hard to see okay okay where are you there we go There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna have to be super careful. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Come on. There we go. 
Yeah, we just need to get out of here. There we go. It'll be nice when I can get out of this place without having to constantly use the thermal visor. Okay. Okay. These admit... These emit a little bit of light that I can... Okay. Ooh, take a bit of a breather from the thermal visor. Okay. Is that what I think it is? Yes. Large missile ammunition. There we go. There we go. I like being ultra destructive. <laughs> okay. I believe this is where I need to go. Yes. Interestingly enough, my shots don't really emit that much light. They don't really em emit any light at all, unlike the original game. Okay. There we go. Okay. Nice. Didn't I miss something? I think I missed something. Yes. Well, yeah, that's because I didn't have the Super Missile before coming here. Super Missile can get rid of Cordite. Nice. Alright, let's continue heading out of here. Don't know if it actually is true, but... But Lock-On seems to, uh... Minimize the issue a bit. Because at least you're focused on one, on one enemy in the center of your vision.
What are you doing? There we go. I needed the thermal visor in order to see the shadow pirates. All right, we should be finally out of here. We don't need to use the thermal visor for extended periods of time, I should say. And now that we're back here, we can open this door. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, this one is Cordite, so we'll go ahead and destroy this one. Hmm. And if we look at the f with the thermal visor, there's another power conduit. Do that. We'll head through. Where does this lead us? Well, kind of leads us to something pretty dangerous. A bunch of rocks. I'm not kidding. Interesting boss design. This is Thardis. An animated sentient creature of stone charged with phazon radiation. The phazon radiation given off by Thardis negates auto targeting systems, preventing lock on. It may be possible to acquire alternate targets with a different visor. So, yes, we're going to have to use Thermal Visor. The chaotic nature of phazon irradiation leads to instability in its structural integrity. Thardis can encase targets in ice, and its colossal size and strength make it a formidable opponent. Alright. So yes, we can't lock on to him. We can't lock on to it, I should say. So we're gonna have to use the thermal visor. Alright. Anything that's glowing, that is going to be its next weak point, so go ahead and, uh... I'm going to be using the power beam. And once it's destroyed, you have to switch back out quick. And now we can now I can lock on to the weak point. Now that the now that the rock layer has been taken out. Thankfully, these things can be taken out with like a single super missile, so if he's not going to block There we go. After destroying a weak point, he's going to morph into a, a ball form. So we have to use the boost ball to get out of the way. You can also leave bombs in your wake. Because the bombs can actually... The bombs can actually prematurely destroy the, uh, the weak point. Meaning you don't have to actually use the thermal visor in order to... Uh, defeat this boss. There we go. All right. Hmm. 
see how this is making it easier? There we go. Now he's going to make make the vision a little bit harder to see by introducing a uh, kind of a thunderstorm. Well, not a thunderstorm, a blizzard. I think they definitely made it so that it's so that it, it it's gonna try to chase after you. Damn, R it really likes blocking it, its weak point. God, man, stop it! Oh my God, this is annoying. Okay, I'm just gonna use my power beam then. No missiles. There we go. I don't think I... Oh, I did. There we go. Just wait until it stops. Of course. Okay. After this shot, the blizzard should be fading away. Yep, there we go. And it looks like it's powering up, but it's not really going to be any different. Okay. Yeah, honestly, I like that that uh, that morph boss bomb strategy. That way, you don't have to be using the thermal visor. Okay, just a few more shots. There we go. So for defeating Thardis, we get ourselves a new ability. This is an ability only seen in Metroid 2, the Spider Ball. Press and hold ZL when in Morph Ball mode to attach to Spider Ball tracks. Spider Ball tracks, that's what these are right here. Before I do that though, let me go ahead and scan it because now we can add it to the logbook. So, we need to use the spider ball to get out of here. And that just uh, leaves heading to over there. This seems to be the fastest route. This is where we entered from. So let's go ahead and do that. Also, get, get used to... Uh, having to navigate uh, spider ball track puzzles, because the game loves throwing those around. Even in, even in like the, uh, even in like the other games. I did do a Metroid Prime 3 walkthrough, and you can see for yourself there. No commentary on that one, unfortunately. That was before I was, like, that's before I got, like, more confident to, uh, do live commentary. So, this will let us head to Magmore Caverns, but there's also a spider ball track here. Um, we can't really do much 
by heading through here. So we are going down into Magmore Caverns. And as much as I'd like to continue on, we did make uh, some decent progress, and we have a save station here. So that'll be it for this part. This has been Mr. Bacon Bits with Metroid Prime Remastered. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. And next time, we will be... Um, actually, I think we'll be heading back towards Chozo Ruins. See you guys then.